Hello, this is Dr. Anthony Saras, academic rheumatologist at the University of Oxford in the United Kingdom, reporting for Euler TV. I'm excited today to have Professor Laurent Arnaud from the University of Strasbourg in France with me today. Professor Arnaud, welcome. Thank you very much. You are presenting an exciting uh, lecture, actually, on Saturday morning in the Gold Room about relapsing polychondritis. First of all, would you like to tell us what relapsing polychondritis is? Oh, correct. So thank you very much. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to Eula for the opportunity to showcase this very rare disease. Um, as you know, it's an inflammatory disease of cartilages, but it's just a few cases per million, so it's really an orphan disease. Mm -hmm. And that is great that uh, Eula offers a full session about that. What are the challenges of diagnosing and monitoring relapse in polychondritis? So you're very right, there are lots of challenges. I think the first one is actually to recognize the disease. I think all rheumatologists should be trained to know how to recognize achondritis, which is an inflammation of the mm -hmm. ear or of the nose. But we know from the patient feedback that this is not the case, especially when they present to the emergency room. Um, there is a lot of diagnosis delay for this very rare disease, and that is always a bit sad. Yeah, and uh, would you like to highlight uh, a few um, new pathways for the treatment of relapsing polychondritis? Uh, absolutely, I, I think there are some um, great novelties. The, the main one is the diagnosis of vexas, because chondritis is also seen in vexas. So I think for rheumatologists, it's very important to be able to make a distinction between relapsing polychondritis and chondritis seen in vexas, because the treatment is completely different. Would you suggest uh, a VEXA screen in a patient who have hematological abnormalities? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're, you're right. Uh, again, I think we cannot screen for VEXA in all cases of relaxing polychondritis, but obviously when there are some hematological problems, such as uh, microcytosis or thrombocytopenia, it is a very good idea to make a check for that. Yeah, or in case there is poor response to to corticosteroids, for example. Yeah, also, uh, yeah. That there is another situation that is many, can lead to some important issues. And pr Professor Arnaud, from, mm -hmm. fr from your practice, do you usually uh, recommend a DMAR from the very beginning of the diagnosis of relapsing polychondritis? Yeah, I, I, I think the first episode, usually the diagnosis is not made, but when the chondritis comes over and over, we definitely want to protect the cartilage from uh, mm -hmm. deformities, so I, I would recommend to start a treatment when the diagnosis is made, okay. of course. And avoid the toxicity of long-term corticosteroids, probably. Yeah, unfortunately, this is a disease that is often quite refractory, mm. and many patients go on with corticosteroids on a chronic base, and often they need some pretty important doses, such as 10 milligrams. Uh, I think the, the corticosteroid sparing strategies are not working very well, mm. and these are the data we're going to discuss on. Wow. Uh, this, is a, this is definitely a big challenge for rheumatology. Uh, I think so, yeah. indeed. We're looking forward to listening to your talk, and thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.